Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. In this video, I want to show you how to measure the dielectric coefficient of some PCB material. It is way easier than you might think. But you might ask, why on earth would I want to do that? Well, if you're planning on creating a PCB that has controlled impedance traces on it, then you have to know the dielectric coefficient of the PCB material you plan on using for the project. What started this whole thing for me was my RF splitter project, which will be the subject of an up and coming video. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. So let's start the process of measuring stuff. In order to determine the dielectric coefficient of your PCB material, it starts by carefully measuring the material dimensions in three-dimensional space. We need to be able to calculate the total area of the copper and the thickness of the dielectric material. So let's go to the bench and start measuring my representative piece of PCB material. Because the end calculation is going to require everything in meters, we should confine our measurements to the metric system. I will make my measurements in millimeters and then convert them to meters for the calculations. Now this is kind of an oddly shaped piece because I've already cut a hunk out of the corner here. So we're going to measure the sections. We have one section here and we have the second section here and I'll calculate the area of this section and add it to the area of this section to get the total area of copper on the board. So let's make our measurement here. We carefully line up the end of our, our precision ruler here and we look here and it says we have 354 millimeters for the length of this and then we come here and we very carefully measure this length and that comes out to be 36 millimeters. Now, my ruler isn't long enough to measure end to end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this distance here, add it to this distance to get the overall length of this section here. So in measuring this section right here very carefully, it comes out to 51 and a half millimeters. So 51 and a half plus 354 gives me a total length of this side of 405.5. All right, now let's measure the size in this direction. Again, we line everything up very carefully with the edge. And this is 176 millimeters, it looks like. 176 millimeters from here to here. So how thick is it? Now we can't measure the actual thickness of the substrate, but we can measure the thickness of the overall PCB material, the copper, the substrate, and the copper, and then calculate the thickness of the substrate later. Now I'm going to use my electronic calipers here. I've set it up to measure millimeters. I've, I've put the jaws very squarely together. I've zeroed it so it says 0.00, .00 and now I'm going to measure my thickness of my PCB material and what do I learn? Now you got to be really careful to get this laid out exactly right and according to my calipers it is 1.53 millimeters thick. 1.53 millimeters thick. Now we can move on to calculating the things that we need to measure the dielectric coefficient. We will start our calculations with the area of the copper on the board. Section 1 is 354 millimeters by 36 millimeters or 0.354 meters by 0.036 meters which gives us a total area for section one of 0.012744 square meters. Section two is 405.5 millimeters by 176 millimeters, 
or 0 0.4055 meters by 0.176 meters and the area calculates out to be 0 0.071368 square meters. So the total area of copper is the addition of these two sections, which gives us a total area of 0 0.084112 square meters. Now, let's turn our attention to the thickness of the substrate or dielectric material. Now, we measured the overall thickness of the PCB material at 1.53 millimeters. And this includes the copper on both sides and the substrate. So we have to subtract out the thickness of the copper itself. And you say, well, how on earth do we do that? Well, we make an assumption and then look up the value on a table. The most common PCB material out there is manufactured with what is called one ounce copper. What this means is that they spread one ounce of copper across every square foot of PCB substrate. Now, unless you know for certain otherwise, this is probably what you're holding in your hand. So, we search the internet for something like PCB copper thickness and find a table what that will tell us that one ounce of copper on a PCB is 0 0.0347 millimeters thick. We have copper on both sides of the, of the substrate, so the total copper thickness that we have to subtract will be twice this, or 0 0.0694 millimeters. Now we measured the overall thickness at 1.53 millimeters, we subtract our copper thickness from this, so we get a substrate thickness of 1.4606 millimeters. Now, we have to change this to meters because our equations want meters, so this comes out to 0 0.0014606 meters. So let's just tabulate our final results. The total copper area is 0 0.084112 square meters and the substrate or dielectric thickness is 0 0.0014606 meters. Now we're ready to move on to the next step measuring the capacitance of our PCB material. Remember that a capacitor is two conductive materials separated by an insulator or dielectric of some sort. Here we have some PCB material which has copper on one side, copper on the other side, and an insulating substrate in between. This substrate becomes the dielectric of our capacitor. With the advent of relatively inexpensive VNAs like the Nano VNA, it is reasonably easy to accurately measure the capacitance of your PCB material. I would strongly recommend against using an antenna analyzer to make this measurement. I have seen significant errors in measuring capacitance and inductance using antenna analyzers. In this demonstration, I will be using my Nano VNA to make the measurement. Now, one important note about this measurement. We want to do it at as low a frequency as possible to avoid the effects of self-resonance. You say, well, what is self-resonance? Self-resonance is where the inductance of the device being measured and the capacitance of the same device get together and resonate at a particular frequency. As we approach this point, the inductive reactance subtracts from the capacitive reactance and vice versa, and this causes errors in measurement. Now, Let's go to the bench and measure the capacitance of this PCB material. The first step in our setup is to carefully solder two small wires to the edge of our material. This is where we will be connecting the VNA. We want to make sure that we clean up the edges of any cuts in the material. Using an ohmmeter on a high ohms scale, make sure the two sides of the PCB material are not shorted to one another. With this piece having been cut into, it's a very real possibility. Next, I had to find a way to support the material without significantly affecting the capacitance of the material. I chose to use this cardboard box, 
setting the material on its edge in just enough of a slot to support the material. With my PC board material ready for the measurement process, it's time to get our Nano VNA ready to go. I'm using my SMA to BNC male cable with a BNC to N adapter to follow, and then that connects to my highly technical fixture, which is just an N female with a couple clips out here at the end. I'm going to use the PC software for my Nano VNA because it's easier and it allows me to better share with you what I'm doing. So we'll start the software. And then we will connect to the VNA. We have to first set our start and stop frequencies. I am going to choose 0 0.5 megahertz and a stop frequency of 7 megahertz. And I'll do a quick sweep, make sure that everything looks good. 500 kilohertz up here, 7 megahertz down here, 3.75 megahertz. There we go. All right. Now we have to calibrate. I'm going to use my highly calibrated calibration standards to do it. I have my short, which is a short piece of wire. I have my open, well that's just open clip leads over here. And then I have my high precision load here, which is a 50 ohm 0.1% metal film resistor with its leads cut really, really short. All right, let's go through the calibration process. We come down here to calibration. Are you going to use the calibration assistant? connect the short. So we're going to come here, grab our short, connect it across our clip leads. There we go. And click on OK. And then we're going to connect up our open. Well, there it is. There is our open. And now we're going to take our, our precision load here and we're going to connect that up to our clip leads. And make sure that we got a good connection there. And we don't need to do two ports, so we're just going to click on Apply. And we're going to close. And so at this point, if I do a sweep, I should see 50 ohms plus or minus a very small number on the J side, on the reactive side. So that looks good. But I'm going to do a sanity check. I do my sanity check when I do this kind of stuff using this, this precision NPO disc ceramic capacitor. Its nominal value is 27 picofarads. So I will connect this up to my clip leads here. Make sure I have a good connection. All right, now let's scan. And it says that it is 27.633 picofarads at 3.75. So that tells me that we are good to go. Now, with that said, we are ready to go and measure our PCB material capacitance. We connect the VNA to our little wire pigtails that we soldered to the PCB material, as you can see right here. And now we can scan and see what we get. We do our sweep. And here at 3.75 megahertz, we find that we have 2.3253 nanofarads. Now, we need that in farads. So that turns out to be 2.3253 times 10 to the minus 9 farads. Now, I don't know about you, but I was kind of surprised at how much capacitance this thing had. Now, with all the physical and electrical measurements made, we can now calculate the dielectric coefficient of the PCB substrate.
the standard equation to calculate the capacitance of a capacitor in farads is the quantity of the dielectric constant of the dielectric times the permittivity of free space in farads per meter times the area of the copper in square meters all divided by the distance between the plates in meters. Now the permittivity of free space is equal to 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. Now when we rearrange this equation and solve it for the dielectric constant, we get the dielectric constant or dielectric coefficient it equals the capacitance times the distance between the plates all divided by the permittivity of free space times the area of the plates. So let's put all of our numbers into our equation. So the dielectric constant of our dielectric of our PCB material is equal to 2.3243 times 10 to the minus 9 times 0 0.0014606 all divided by 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 times 0 0.084112. And this comes out to be 4.559. So the dielectric constant for our PCB substrate turns out to be, drum roll please, 4.559, and we are done! Well, we have successfully measured the dielectric coefficient of the PCB substrate from my hunk of PCB material. It wasn't hard or technical as maybe you might have thought. Now, we are ready to design our impedance controlled traces on our PC board. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.